Right now at 6, local activists are speaking out on the ongoing crisis in Ukraine with a rally in downtown Madison. And the sun rises and sets on another day in Kyiv as Ukrainians look to hold off a Russian invasion and defend their capital. And in more local news, Sun Prairie may be moving its graduation date again Why senior students say they're relieved. That's all coming up at 6. I am safe. I am able to walk back home, go to bed, and wake up the next morning. And there are people back in Ukraine who do not have that privilege. And my fear for my family is nothing compared to what they feel right now. There's a lot of developments tonight in Ukraine, and we're going to get to those in just a moment. But we're seeing people in our community step up today in the hundreds to show their support. Talalil Mahodin went to today's rally and joins us now with their message. Rally organizers say today was about showing support for Ukraine and standing up against Russian aggression. And it's a message many were ready to get behind. At the state capitol this afternoon, it was a sea of blue and yellow with hundreds from the Madison area and many with ties to Eastern Europe turning up to show their support for Ukraine. Among them was UW international student Yuri Vasyuk, a native of the country, who says he came out because he wanted to see like-minded people. I feel unity not only with my nation, but I feel unity with lots of peoples and nations from all over the world who are together with us in those hard and horrible times. Speakers at the rally took turns sharing their stories with the crowd, many of whom have close relatives and friends in Ukraine, some forced to hide in bomb shelters. The group also voiced support for the U.S.'s economic sanctions against Russia, but asked for more help, specifically protecting Ukraine's airspace. They also say while the average American can't offer military support, they are asking people to help raise awareness about the issue and contact their representatives and push them to take more action. All right, thanks so much to Halil. Madison's mayor and common council are also condemning the invasion in Ukraine tonight. In a statement, they said their hearts go out to the people of Ukraine and say the U.S. and their allies must continue the pursuit of peace and bring an end to this conflict. Today, uh, uh, in the Kiev, the Putin will meet hell. And the Russian people and the Russian soldiers who come here to kill Ukrainians will pay the uh, big prize. Battles are raging across Ukraine this weekend. A senior U.S. defense official says hundreds of missiles have been launched by the Russians, including several within just the past hour. But the Ukrainians are really holding their ground. Cole Higgins has the latest. The battle is underway for control of Ukraine's capital, Kyiv. In Kyiv and in key parts of the country, our army is in control. A senior U.S. defense official says more than 250 missiles have been launched at Ukraine as of Saturday. Cameras capturing Russian armored vehicles streaming toward Ukrainian territory. The U.S. offering to evacuate Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Zelensky refusing. We are not putting down arms. We will be defending our country because our weapon is truth. Dramatic video showing Ukrainian citizens standing in front of Russian tanks attempting to stop them from moving forward. Stop the war! In the U.S., support for the Ukrainian people shown across the country in Atlanta, Georgia, New York City, Washington, D.C., and beyond. The Biden administration approving $350 million in security assistance to Ukraine. Some officials fear it's still not enough. Russian President Vladimir Putin already has more than 50 percent of his total assembled power inside Ukraine, according to a senior U.S. defense official. I'm deeply concerned, and I fear that unless we step up additional military aid swiftly, that they are going to be overwhelmed. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. As thousands of Ukrainians leave the country, we're seeing signs of humanity. A border town in Poland is giving refugees blankets, food, and water. People in this town left donations for anyone who needs them and set up tables with hot coffee and sweets. The UN says at least 120,000 people have already fled Ukraine for Poland and other neighboring countries. And for the latest developments in Eastern Europe, make sure you've got our Channel 3000 News app. It's free and available in the App Store.
New tonight, Beloit police say a 33-year-old man is in custody in connection to a shooting earlier this month. Marcus Crenshaw was arrested yesterday on several charges, including first degree and reckless injury. Officers say that Crenshaw shot a 43-year-old man in the city on February 10th. That man later showed up at the hospital and is expected to be okay. Okay, let's switch things to weather now. It's beginning to be a pretty nice stretch of weather here in Madison. Meteorologist is Austin Kopnitsky is outside. He's got your certified most accurate forecast. And you know, it was actually pretty decent outside today. A little bit on the breezy side of things, but for tomorrow, we're actually going to see very similar temperatures, but a lack of the wind. Now it's still 29 degrees outside, and we are still feeling a bit of a breeze. It does look like the latest register there it does show calm winds in Madison, but I assure you it's not quite calm right now. It's right around 10 to even 20 miles per hour for most spots, but that will calm down in the overnight hours. Doppler track, it looks great. I mean, you really had to go hunting today if you wanted to end up catching even any clouds overhead. Lots of blue skies today, and we're expecting just as much for tomorrow. Temperatures also looking quite nice, and we're only going to see temps falling back down into the lower 20s overnight, but take a look at some of those wind speeds. They're still quite elevated. They're going to dial back throughout these overnight hours, but early on, it's still going to be quite breezy. A low of 20 degrees, but what about that extended forecast? Tomorrow's looking nice, but how long will we keep this nice stretch of weather before that next rain or so chance? I'll have an update coming up in a bit. All right, thanks so much, Austin. Topping our COVID headlines tonight, most Americans no longer need to wear a mask indoors. According to new CDC metrics, only 28% of people are currently living in areas where you should wear a mask. Before yesterday, that number was 99% of the population. The new metrics rely on hospitalization and case data to determine the level of transmission. According to the CDC, under these new guidelines, in our viewing area, only Green County shows high activity. That means a mask is required indoors. Rock and La Follette counties are at the medium category and all others are in the low category. The last time we, told, we were told that we could take off our mask was last summer, but they were eventually brought back when the Delta and Omicron variants took hold. Local experts say until more people get vaccinated, there's always a chance that this could happen again later this year. No, we almost don't want to talk about it because it's just so defeating to think that that could happen. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that we at least get a, a little bit of a run here. Um, it would take a pretty special variant um, to send us back, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Just a reminder that Dane County's mask mandate is set to officially be lifted on Tuesday. Continuing coverage tonight, Sun Prairie High School may still be moving their graduation date again. Graduation is currently set for May 26th, but the district is forming a graduation committee made up of their parents, seniors, and staff members. This comes after the Alliant Energy Center double booked its arena for May 27th, forcing Sun Prairie to move their ceremony back one day. That caused some issues for student athletes who would be forced to choose between walking across the stage or competing. It's really nice to know that that our message has been heard and that within a couple of weeks we should be able to form a really good decision and and make the right change for for students for the community and for for families i think i'm i'm really excited about the direction we've gone so far the committee's goal is to present a final recommendation to district leaders no later than march 15th it's a big night for the Badgers with a win over Rutgers tonight and a win over Purdue on Tuesday. Wisconsin would win its second Big Ten regular season title in three years. Right now, the Badgers are leading the Knights 33-24 to at halftime, and we're going to have another update coming up soon in sports. As the academic year winds down, high schoolers in our area are getting ready for prom season. Coming up at 6, how a local Goodwill is making sure that everyone looks their best, their best for spring. And tonight on News 3 Now at 10, it's one final lap for a local racing legend. How Angel Park is in Sun Prairie is honoring Kevin Olson. That's coming up tonight at 10. Attention homeowners, we're looking for 50 homeowners who need a kitchen upgrade. Mad City is Wisconsin's number one remodeler, your trusted local source for kitchen cabinet refacing. Our design consultants make it fun and easy with dozens of colors and wood finishes, plus custom upgrades like soft closed doors and drawers and new countertops. Transform your kitchen in as little as two days. 50 homeowners who call now will receive special savings. Free installation on your cabinet refacing project. 18 months, no interest, no payments. Senior and military discounts. We'll take before and after pictures and compensate you for your time. Call during this program for a free $50 Amazon gift card with your free in-home estimate.
From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call with zip code and location to qualify. Dial 608-298-5383. That's 608-298-5383. To be a thriver with metastatic breast cancer means asking for what we want and need, and we need more time. So we want Kiskali. Women are living longer than ever before with Kiskali. When taken with an aromatase inhibitor or fulvestrant in postmenopausal women with HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer, Kiskali is a pill that's significantly more effective at delaying disease progression versus an aromatase inhibitor or fulvestrant alone. Kiskali can cause lung problems or an abnormal heartbeat, which can lead to death. It can cause serious skin reactions, liver problems, and low white blood cell counts that may result in severe infections. Tell your doctor right away if you have new or worsening symptoms, including breathing problems, cough, chest pain, a change in your heartbeat, dizziness, yellowing of the skin or eyes, dark urine, tiredness, loss of appetite, abdomen pain, bleeding, bruising, fever, chills, or other symptoms of an infection, a severe or worsening rash, are or plan to become pregnant or breastfeeding. Avoid grapefruit during treatment. Ask your doctor about living longer with Kiskali. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. The Progress Center for Black Women is celebrating more than three years of work this weekend. The center hosted open house events over the past week, and people got a chance to learn about the center's programming and how to become a member. Center founder Sabrina Madison says her favorite part over the last three years has been seeing black women thrive. The best of it has been seeing black women who I may have met when I first put on the first Black Women's Leadership Conference in 2016 and see them now accomplish goals that they had early on back a couple years ago. So to see those women in new positions, you know, new jobs, now having families, married, or left their jobs like I did and started businesses. The center's open house week wrapped up today, but organizers say they're always looking for volunteers. Prom season is officially here and high schoolers are getting ready. A Goodwill store in Madison is hosting its first ever prom dress sale this weekend. Dresses start at $29.99 with over 1,500 options to choose from. The dresses were donated throughout the year in ranging colors and sizes. Customers can get all of their jewelry and their shoes all at affordable prices too, which organizers say is really important right now. Every time somebody purchases a dress, they can feel good about that purchase, not only with how they look and going to prom, but I think it's a good way to support the community with our mission and helping people. All proceeds from this event go back to support Goodwill's mission of helping the local community. The sale will again happen tomorrow from 10 until 6 at Goodwill on Verona Road. Around the state, three orphan bear cubs are now in really good hands after being rescued by a wildfire center. The cubs were found last week by a group of researchers. Here's that story. Researchers were using a radio collar to track the female bear for a project. Uh, this particular female had been part of the study for a number of years and there was some sort of complication and unfortunately she passed away. The late mama bear left behind three bear cubs. Without the help of wild instincts, the bear cubs would most likely die. Of course, they would perish because they're not able to fend for themselves at this point. They can barely even walk. For now, the cubs are being bottle fed by staff. Right now, they're a little bit older, fortunately, so their eyes have just opened. So we're there every four hour feedings and we don't have to do anything around the clock. Right now, the bears weigh about four pounds and are living in an incubator. Nannyat says they try to minimize human contact with the cubs as much as possible. So the biggest thing is they can imprint if you're not careful. And because, you know, we're the caregivers, we're giving them a bottle, they see us as the caregivers. In about two weeks, the cubs will learn how to eat other foods. So what we do is we have a couple different isolated rooms. We teach them how to eat out of a dish as soon as they're a little bit more coordinated. After that, Nanny it says it's pretty much giving the cubs food and leaving them alone. As the cubs grow, so will their enclosure. And then we have a couple outdoor enclosures that are very large, so we move them from smaller to bigger as we go. The bear cubs are expected to be about 80 to 125 pounds before they're released. They adjusted a while very well and the thing is when we do release them they've already had all their fat reserves. For the most part they almost stop eating completely because they've already fattened up enough and all they want to do is go to winter sleep. The bears are expected to be re-released re into the wild after bear hunting season ends in October. Still ahead at six, do you know how to camp during the winter? Why a local EMT is taking this weekend to teach everyone a few new skills. Plus more sunshine to close out the weekend. Austin's back with your latest forecast after the break.
of the best ways to improve the value of your home is to start with a kitchen upgrade. And Mad City Kitchens has everything you need to flip your kitchen from old and outdated to bright and beautiful in as little as two days. With custom cabinet refacing, we can avoid a lengthy remodel, stay under budget, and transform your kitchen in style with stain resistant cabinet finishes and several design options, plus durable countertops and a new kitchen sink. Now, 50 homeowners who need a kitchen upgrade will receive special savings with free installation on a cabinet refacing project with 18 months, no interest and no payments, senior and military discounts, and you'll be compensated for your time. Call during this program and receive a free $50 Amazon gift card with your free in-home estimate. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call with zip code and location to qualify. Dial 608-298-5383. That's 608-298-5383. Dry eye symptoms keep driving you crazy? Inflammation in your eye might be to blame. Let's kick Ken's ache and burn into gear. Over-the-counter eye drops typically work by lubricating your eyes and may provide temporary relief. Those drops will probably pass right by me. Zydra works differently, targeting inflammation that can cause dry eye disease. What is that? Zydra! No! It can provide lasting relief. Oh. Zydra is the only FDA-approved non-steroid eye drop specifically for the signs and symptoms of dry eye disease. One drop in each eye twice a day. Don't use if you're allergic to Zydra. Common side effects include eye irritation, discomfort, or blurred vision when applied to the eye, and unusual taste sensation. Don't touch container tip to your eye or any surface. After using Zydra, wait 15 minutes before reinserting contacts. Got any room in your eye? Be proactive about managing your symptoms by talking to your doctor about twice-daily Zydra like I did. I I prefer you did it. Zydra, not today, dry eye. You're a hard worker. Provide for your family. Do good things in the community. Help out your neighbors. You've been there for so many others. Now, we're here for you. Your local Wisconsin Energy and Emergency Assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your heat and power on. Apply now for a hand up. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. Car thefts increased 9% last year, and experts say the economic stress is only going to drive that increase higher. Consumer Reports has some advice on how you can make sure your car stays safe when you're not behind the wheel. Nina and Joel Haberly woke up the day after Christmas only to find their car wasn't in their garage. Went up to the garage and I walked in and the car wasn't there and the garage door was open. And I was like, wait a minute. You know, and I looked up and down the street thinking maybe we parked it on the street and there was no car. So I just walked in the house and I said to Nina, I said, our car's been stolen. She was like, what? Well, no, I think you said, where's our car? Where's our car? <laughs> More than 870,000 cars were stolen in 2020. And numbers for 2021 car thefts likely won't be any better. Consumer Reports says taking some small steps can make your car less of a target. Simply having a light that turns on automatically if anyone approaches uh, your garage can really be effective in scaring away potential thieves. And that also means finding a spot in a well-lit area where you park on the street. You may want to consider a security camera or a well-positioned video doorbell. We've already installed one camera. Consumer Reports says anti-theft devices work, and having one may save you as much as 15% on your auto insurance. You can also have a professional install an aftermarket alarm system, which often includes a visible blinking red light. And those big clunky steering wheel locks? Police say they work because they make your car look harder to steal. And the obvious tip bears repeating, remove the key and lock the doors. If you leave your key or your key fob in the vehicle and it's unlocked, it's an open invitation. Joel and Nina think they left the fob key inside the unlocked car with the garage door open. Luckily, police found their car two days later in another town. I will never, ever leave the fob key in the car again. <laughs> this is Deirdre Michalopoulos. You can find more tips and tricks for how you can keep your car safe on Consumer Reports' website. New tonight at 6, the City of Madison is making sure everyone knows how to camp in cooler temps. The Parks Department hosted an event today at Vilas Park. People learned a lot about heat loss, cold weather emergencies, and how to set up a camp safely in the wintertime.
So I had an injury a few years ago. I broke my leg when I was out skiing, which motivated me learning how to kind of do some more uh, wilderness safety stuff. So I wanted to share some of those principles with the community. Um, they invited me here because I know a little bit about that. And I'm excited to, to do that. Overnight camping is not allowed in Madison Parks, but you can find the latest full list of places to camp and how to make reservations on the DNR's website. Austin, that includes you, buddy. Yeah. I know you're a big camper, huh? That's right. You know, I'm excited. I, I love going out and camping, and it's always better to be overprepared than underprepared. So going to something like that, it can only realistically help you out. But outside today, it was gorgeous. We saw a lot of sunshine and temperatures in those middle 30s. We're going to stay dry all the way through next Thursday, and a lot of us are even going to stay dry throughout that Friday as well. Right now, we're only looking at a small chance late in the day to see a rain shower. But mild at times next week, we'll see the 40s returning to the forecast a few rain chances as well in the forecast but we're also tracking one chance of snow it's not going to happen this weekend the doppler track is going to look like this all day tomorrow as well so we are really falling into that dry pattern taking a step back there's really just nothing happening in the state so let's take another step back here and we really have to zoom out quite a ways just to see any precipitation and that's lying way far down here to our south even far to the south of memphis and cincinnati so we are good to go more sunshine on the docket for tomorrow. We may see a little bit of cloud cover early in the morning. Temperatures right around those lower 20s. But for the afternoon, sunshine returns. Mid 30s also return. It's going to be a pretty nice day for tomorrow. Jumping to Monday, we pretty much rinse and repeat. We're going to have a decent morning with temperatures in those upper teens or lower 20s. Afternoon temperatures a little bit warmer. Some upper 30s and lower 40s. So our temperatures are going to stay a little bit warmer than average for most of this forecast. Slow Slowly rising here over these next few days as well, even reaching those middle 40s at times for Wednesday. A bit of a cooler Thursday, but those temperatures do bounce right back up with another system expected here on Friday and Saturday. But that's going to be a rain shower system for the uh, most likely as of right now, especially with those high temperatures in the lower to even mid 40s. Six to 10 day temperature outlook still shows that around that time frame, we're going to be a little bit warmer than average. Average high temperature today, it's about 35 degrees, and our extended forecast shows most of these days are going to be right on the money, if not a little bit warmer than that. But with how warm we are looking at towards the end of this upcoming work week and the beginning of this next weekend, that's going to bring some rain showers. Those low to mid 40s makes it very, very tough to actually see any snow forming. If we saw snow and it was 45 degrees out there, well, I'd probably need to go take some more classes because it's, <laughs> I mean, it's so hard, nearly impossible to actually see that happening. I, I, if you wanted to do more education, <laughs> I'm, I'm so done with school. I don't know about you. Oh, I, I could never go back to school. Could you? It was the math. The math <laughs> killed me with this degree. But afterwards, I mean, the science, I soaked it all up and loved it. But I just can't go back to the math. Oh, yeah. so tough. School got really, really hard, like, after the third grade. So <laughs> I, after the third grade, I, I don't even remember much. So I'm sorry, like... Mom and Dad. <laughs> uh, thanks, Austin. Things are heating up on the ice. Wisconsin entered the day just one win away from a conference semifinals highlights from this afternoon's battle with Bemidji State it's coming up next in sports news three now first born weather is brought to you by lazy boy home furnishings and decor discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture lazy boy home furnishings and decor schedule your free design consultation today if you're ready for a kitchen upgrade, then call Mad City Kitchens. Chances are your cabinet frames are still in great shape. So don't replace, reface. Update your existing cabinets with new door and drawer fronts. Choose the perfect color for your kitchen, from candlelight to cascade white or chocolate pear. Add new countertops, soft closed doors and drawers, and a Lazy Susan. Installed in as little as two days, backed with a lifetime warranty. We're looking for 50 homeowners who need a kitchen upgrade. 50 homeowners will receive free installation on a cabinet refacing project. 18 months, no interest and no payments, plus senior and military discounts. We'll take before and after pictures and compensate you for your time. Last chance to call during this program and receive a free $50 Amazon gift card with your free in-home estimate. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call with zip code and location to qualify. Dial 608-298-5383. That's 608-298-5383. What are you recommending for muscle pain? 
Based on clinical data, I recommend Salon Pass. Agreed. My patients like these patches because they work up to 12 hours, even on moderate pain. Salon Pass, it's good medicine. Water is one of nature's most beautiful and life-sustaining resources. At no fault of their own, many Wisconsin utility customers are facing a shutoff to their water service. This leaves them without the one life-giving resource we all take for granted. And those hardest hit are on fixed incomes, juggling multiple temporary jobs, or those who lost full-time jobs in sectors hardest hit by the pandemic. If someone you care about needs a hand up, your local Wisconsin energy and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your water, heat, and power on. If you are in danger of losing your water service, call 833-H2O-WISC, 833-426-9472. You may not ask for it, but we're here to help. Tomorrow morning, we'll have the latest developments on the conflict in Ukraine. And we're looking at milder temperatures. We'll give you a look in detail of what to expect heading into your Sunday morning from 6.30 to 8. hockey to find its rhythm again. The Badgers opened the WCHA playoffs with a win over Bemidji State. Might have been a close one, but hey, a win is a win. And all they need is one more to sweep the best of three series. Up 1-0 early, Bemidji State's number 18 gets a five-minute major plus ejection, which gives UW plenty of chances. Nicole Lamantia delivers on that. She clears the traffic for goal number two. Well, how about another one for good measure? Dara Watts fires left side to put the Badgers up 3-0 in the first period. Wisconsin out shoots Bemidji State 24-2 in that first period alone. They go on to win 5-0 with the shutout. They're heading to the final faceoff for the 12th straight season. And the men's basketball team is in action right now. Badgers trying to avenge their loss to Rutgers just a few weeks ago. Game is in the second half at last check. Wisconsin up 39 to 36. Brad Davison leading the team with 11 points. We're going to have more from this game tonight at 10. And the race for the Big Ten title heats up with Michigan State upsetting Purdue this afternoon. Wisconsin is in prime position to clinch. Now, a couple scenarios to get there. If the Badgers beat the Scarlet Knights tonight, they take down the Boilmakers on Tuesday, they'll earn the crown. We have more on those scenarios also tonight at 10. And Jerry Kelly back for the second round of the Colgard Classic enters day two. Days two, two shots off the lead. Well, Kelly's locked in, especially on the back nine. Back-to-back -back birdies on 16 and 17. He finishes with one bogey, six birdies in all. Kelly is tied for second and two shots off the lead, heading into that final round. Brad, Austin? Jerry Kelly. Hey, we're uh, looking forward to that. And how's our uh, weather looking for this week, huh? Oh, uh, you know, this week, whew, it is fantastic. And it started really with today with that sunshine. It was quite breezy, and the breeze will stick around for the, at least the early portion of tonight. We will see that dialing back here in the overnight hours with mostly clear skies. But temperatures are going to stay right around those lower to mid 20s. So temps looking pretty good. And then for tomorrow and beyond, we are really stuck in a dry pattern. And this pattern is going to be quite nice as well with near average or above average temperatures temperatures all the way through Thursday and it's going to stay quite mild for Friday and Saturday, but we are still tracking a system right now. It looks like it's going to be mainly rain. All right, Austin, thank you so, so much for joining us. We'll see you tonight at 10.